Hi guys, my name is Moran and welcome to my series Getting Personal where I gather different stories from Reddit and today I thought we would explore Am I the Devil? It's a subreddit where all the holes go to party together. Most of the stories that end up there are just pure insanity, but I've picked some of my favorites for this episode, the ones that were in my saved folder for a long time, or not that long, because, you know, I do kind of scour Reddit for the best of the best a lot. So let's dive in. So the first one is, am I the to stop helping my wife with our newborn's night because she disrespected me in front of our friends. I, 29 male, and my wife, 28 female, have been married for five years, but we have been together for 10 years. Today we have two kids, our daughter, one year and a half, and our son, five weeks. After the birth of our son, we decided that my wife would be a stay-at-home mom until our son is six months old. I wouldn't have minded being a stay-at-home dad, but I have a better salary and we couldn't live on my wife's income. Even if I work, I'm a super helpful dad and partner in general. I almost do every errand. I book appointments. I take care of my daughter in the morning before dropping her off at daycare, etc. And since the birth of our son, I also do 50% of the bottles during the night. While my wife takes care of cooking, laundry, dishes, sterilizing baby bottles, some errands and the baby during the day. Three days ago, we were at a friend's apartment one evening with our children for a little gathering, two couples plus us. During the evening, my wife took care of our newborn and I was responsible for watching our daughter. You should know that our friend's apartment is on the second floor without elevator. And when it was time to leave, I took our daughter in my arms and I thought that my wife would take care of carrying our son in his stroller carrying caught. But instead, she collected all the bags in our daughter's stroller. And she asked if someone could help us and come down with our son and his stroller carry cot, which I admit is heavy but not impossible for my wife to carry. I didn't want to leave responsibility for my son on the stairs to someone else, so I told my wife to drop everything and take the stroller carry cot. At first she did it, but then she sees my daughter in one of our friend's arms and she assumed he will be the one coming down with us and I will be the one carrying our son. So she collected once again all the bags and the stroller. But finally my daughter came back into my arms not wanting to go down with anyone else and that's when my wife disrespected me. I told her once again to stop with the bags and to take care of our son. She looked at me angry at the situation and told me, you are really annoying me right now. Someone else could pick the stroller carry cot with our son. I did not at all appreciate the tone of her voice, which was really aggressive, and her attitude in front of our friends. At the end, a friend of ours took the bags and my wife took our son. That night, I decided not to help with nighttime bottles for our son because my wife had taken a nap with our son during the day. And in the morning, she expected a thank you for doing the night alone, and I told her she would not have it until she apologized for her behavior yesterday. I also decided that I would no longer help at all at night and that the rest of the time I would do the bare minimum until my wife apologized. I told her that now I would be like all the other husbands. So am I the Oh, look at me. I'm such a good partner. I do some of the chores for the babies and I help with the babies. Oh my god, I'm such a hero. That's my first impression from this. But also, you're straight up evil because if you think that it's fine to punish your wife for disrespecting you, I don't even know. Like, I don't feel like she did disrespect you. Like, you were being annoying and she told you you were being annoying. So, okay. But generally, even then, like if you had a disagreement, even if you didn't like the way she spoke to you in front of your friends, that is something that should be solved in the conversation. Like the fact that you think that punishing your partner for something 
they said or did is okay in any way makes you kind of a bitch. you think you are not in the wrong and it's hilarious how is your mind going from she spoke to me in a way i didn't like to i am not going to help with our son at all is just mind-blowing to me i don't understand the logic i don't understand this way of thinking in general and also i am going to be like all other husbands dude you are doing the bare minimum what is considered normal for a man and a dad in the relationship if you react like this to something that she just said when she was annoyed i don't even even know how insufferable you are in general and i really don't want to know so let's just move on to the next story am i the asshole for telling my wife i am under financial abuse after she refused to let me donate 200 dollars context i am a stay-at-home dad and my wife works full-time with a very high paying job seven figures despite our current high income my wife came from a lower class background and does doesn't like to unnecessarily splurge on ourselves unless it's for our kids. Before the most recent argument, there have been a few other incidents in the past few months where we disagreed on gifts slash donations. To be fair to her, she might be particularly on edge because she found out there have been a few cases where I've been donating slash gifting money without her knowledge to the tune of a few thousand dollars, even though most of the time I always ask her before forehand so which one most of the time or always dude not looking great recently an acquaintance passed away and i would like to donate some money and buy some books for their son i believe the donation will mean a lot to him and is a trivial amount of money to us however my wife disagrees she asked me how much the book costs and i said 13 dollars then she said why don't you just donate 13 dollars then why do you need 200 dollars long story story short, I think she's heartless. She thinks I am wasteful. In general, I dislike how I have to get her approval to donate money. It makes me feel like I have no agency at all financially. When we got married, I gave up my job as a software engineer in the Bay Area to start the family. If I kept my career, I think I would be making at least 200, 300k. But now, even though we never have to worry about our everyday expenses, I feel like I don't have enough discretionary spending. She thinks this is not financial abuse because if she wants to spend non-trivial amounts of money, she would ask me too. So the situation is symmetrical. Am I actually the asshole or am I under financial abuse? This reads to me as like a white man discovering terms like financial abuse or like emotional abuse and you know the wife spoke to him one time in louder tone than usual and they go like oh my god this is emotional abuse this is verbal abuse i'm dying he wants people to tell him that he is in the right so much that it's hilarious, honestly. I mean, not necessarily the whole situation is hilarious, but the way this dude is just so blind to the whole situation just makes me die inside, honestly. Because, like, no, it's not financial abuse. She just wants to know where you spent the money that she earns. Yes, you are a stay-at-home father, and yes, you are entitled to share that money if you agreed on it, but it doesn't mean that you can just randomly take thousands of dollars and just give them away and you think that you somehow are not in the wrong and you don't even have to ask that is crazy to me in my family both me and my husband work but he earns more than me like four times more than i do and whenever either of us wants to spend a large amount of money we always talk about it beforehand and even if he wants to buy himself something pricey right from the money that he earned, he is fully entitled to do whatever the f*** he wants with it, but he will consult me first because we're a family and that's how it works, right? And if I, for example, want to donate money, well, 
I usually donate my own money because that's what I earned. And if I want to do something good, it's logical that I take my salary. But if, for example, say I wanted to donate, I don't know, $200 to a cat shelter and I didn't have that money from my salary, right? Like if I didn't work, I would absolutely consult my husband first and ask if it's fine because he works hard earning that money as the same as the wife and here works hard earning that money and like if the person doesn't mind sharing that money with you because you are a family doesn't mean that you can just randomly spend large amounts of money whenever you like and just give it away because like what the actual f I don't know what's not clicking here. Say I'll try to be constructive in this situation, okay? Because we gotta sometimes not only laugh at these things, but also maybe try to see options to solve the problem. I think it would be good in situations like these if a person who is not earning money, who is a stay-at-home dad or a stay-at-home mom, had their allowance, like a certain amount of money, they can can spend without consulting their partner. And then if you want to donate, say, $200 to a random person, a colleague, a whatever, you can spend it out of your allowance. And if you run out of money that month, that's your problem. That is like basic budgeting basic financial responsibility you know so to me it would make sense but again from this situation from this story it sounds like the dude just wants to take money out of general budget whenever he wants and just give them away because he feels like giving them away so no i think he's super in the wrong and also i really don't like this i think she is heartless no 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 i think she just doesn't like you giving away the money <laughs> she spent so much time earning like i'm sorry dude just wake up a little bit she's not wrong she's not wrong okay i've been ranting for way too long let's see the next story my 25 male ex-fiance 29 female won't divorce her husband or tell him about us how should i tell him about 18 months ago i met this woman ashley ashley and i work in the same office building but for different companies we developed a friendship but over time fell in love at least i did i suspect for her it was all lust the problem is we were both married but agreed we wanted to be together i'm the only one who took action i divorced my wife sydney and that was the hardest thing in my life she was my high school sweetheart friend and confidant who you cheated on nice i just realized while i love my wife that i wasn't in love with her as i was doing that ash kept making excuse after excuse about why it's not the right time to tell her husband and go through with a divorce yesterday i got fed up and said when is she going to do it she actually broke up with me and said well she loved me she doesn't want to break up her family she said she has a great husband and just wants some fun on the side with someone who doesn't have feelings after reflecting i started thinking how much of a disgusting person she is oh like you're not a disgusting person in this situation come on my guy this wasn't about love to her it was about lust she She's a selfish person who will keep cheating on her husband and he doesn't deserve that. So how should I tell him? Should I tell him in person or reach out on social media? Thank you ahead of time for the advice. Whether he deserves that or not is not your place to judge. You're just pissed that the girl will not divorce her husband while you divorced. So you just want revenge don't pretend this is about uh, the husband's well-being it's for you to get your little revenge because y'all both were horrible people who cheated on their spouses and you got divorced but then she refused to which i find this so funny like it's it's just so funny to me where he goes like she's a disgusting person like you are somehow better than that y'all 
y'all both are cheaters. Excuse me, but I despise cheaters. I don't like when people do that. I can understand the logic and how it works from the perspective of the person in some situations but generally like y'all are being terrible your spouses don't deserve this treatment all around absolute yikes and i'm really happy that at least your ex-wife will have an opportunity to find someone who will actually appreciate her and not write like she was my friend and confidant and high school sweetheart but i divorced her for my affair partner who wasn't even that into me <laughs> let's move on to the next story am i the I, 33 male, for resenting my girlfriend, 18 female, for not inviting me to a party she's hosting next weekend. My girlfriend is a senior in high school. Keep in mind, this dude is 30. Three. And her parents are letting her have a huge party at their place and lots of kids in her grade as well as the grade below are going to be there. It grosses me out so much that this is a 33 year old man talking about his girlfriend who is in high school still. Oh my god. She doesn't want me to come because she doesn't think I'll fit in and it'll be awkward for a grown man to be in a party full of teenagers, especially when a majority of the guests are going to be underage. She's somehow sounding more mature than you. <laughs> she says she doesn't want to stir an issue with the underage guests as well as their parents being uncomfortable with a fully grown man partying with them. I told her they won't and even so that I'm literally her boyfriend and she should care more about my feelings than theirs and that she is a horrible girlfriend for not inviting me and letting me hang out at the party. And I said how she should be willing to show me off and introduce me to the friends of my literal girlfriend. She told me we can hang out literally any other time and she'll always love me no matter what but that I can't attend. She's sorry and it's final. We got into an argument about it and eventually I realized it's no use and I cursed at her, got angry at her and we dispersed. The date ended. Later, I apologized to her and she apologized to me. Am I the asshole for that argument? I feel like the argument is a secondary issue. You are the asshole for dating an 18 year old. Stop. I really hope she breaks up with you because this is horrifying and disgusting and the fact that you don't think it is absolutely f***ing gross for 30 plus men to be hanging out at the party with underage kids i just uh, what is how is why is awful stop it to be honest i just I don't like men like that. I used to have a couple of dudes like this. They were not 33, but they were around 25 slash 29 in my friend group when me and my friends were 15, 16. And from that experience and generally from like my <laughs> life experience, I can say that these usually are the dudes who are awfully maladjusted to adult existence. Distance. They cannot find peers to date them, to be friends with them, to just generally fit in with. So they will find teenagers, literal children, to hang out with because children are easier to impress. Children will think you're so cool just because you are older. These dudes, in my opinion, are pathetic. I mean, I'm 28 and I feel like if I were to hang out with like a 16-year-old, right now i would probably be bored out of my mind i would feel awkward i would feel very strange around them because it's just such a big age gap it's odd okay it's just odd please stop dating children so the next one is my 28 male ex 29 female are trying to rekindle our relationship after i cheated what are some ways to re-establish 
trust. I met this woman at my lowest point and she was always there for me. We were together since I was 23 and I can't say I was the man I should have been for her. I kept cheating on her. Last year I learned my lesson. The reason I was cheating was because I was certain that even if she did leave me I can find another one. Now fellas I learned there is not a lot of good women out there so when you find one hold on to her. We've been broken up for a year and the dating scene has been rough even as I became a police officer. Oh my god, you're a police officer. And finally, started making money. The bachelor life is not what it's cracked up to be. So last week I reached out to her and decided it was time to start acting right. I told her I'm done cheating and we've been texting but she's still hesitant. She said she's prayed that I would be the one to treat her how she deserved and we had a great moment. She said she's met a lot of great guys but she wants me still. She says her heart is saying yes but her head is saying leave me alone. She should listen to her head. Listen to your head, girls, not your heart or nether regions. They are misleading. She doesn't think she will ever be able to trust me and while she wants me, she says I destroyed her mental health. We're meeting for drinks Saturday to discuss it and I want to know how to navigate the lack of trust, preferably from couples that dealt with infidelity but made it work. Leave the poor girl alone. Now you sound like a nightmare who treats women as disposable. I was cheating because I was certain that even if she did leave me, I can find another one. Jail. Don't ruin her life. You are obviously just a messed up person and the fact that you want to like go back to her just because you didn't find anything better is just very upsetting. He didn't even go around, dated for a bit and realize that she was the love of his life or that he loves her still. No, he was just like, well, I didn't find anything better, so I'm just gonna go back to her. And he knows he can manipulate her because obviously if he kept cheating and she kept forgiving him, he knows he can pull it off again. It is just so sad that some women women will keep forgiving this kind of behavior. This is trash treatment and his like whole thing of decided it was time to start acting right. Absolutely fucking not. If you're a serial cheater, you go back to the woman who kept forgiving you for that, you will definitely or sure cheat on her again because you know you can because you know you can get away with it i don't see any remorse in this situation that he hurt her there is just me 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 i didn't find a better woman so i'm going back to the old used one i don't see that he's sorry at all for cheating let's see the next story am i for pretending my Chinese fiance is Japanese. So, I've been with fiance for about six years, engaged for for one. As you're probably thinking to yourself, yes, I am a gigantic weeb. Not what I was thinking, but okay. I met her in college and didn't know her nationality for a while. She has a very American last name. I wanted a Japanese girlfriend so badly, but her personality is so amazing, so I dove into a relationship with her anyways. Well, the whole time I've just been pretending she's Japanese. When we visit the Chinese I just pretended it was Japan. My gamer friends think she's Japanese. My drinking buddies think she's Japanese. But no other close friends and family know that I'm pretending. At least that's what I thought. I think she found out somehow from one of the drinking buddies who have only met her a handful of times. But she's very upset about it. Are you surprised, sir? We haven't talked in a few hours since then. No idea who she could have heard it from. She said we will talk talk later tonight. I didn't think it would be any harm to fantasize about and I only told gamer friends and drinking buddies since they are big weeps too. Plus, I hardly know them on a personal level. I don't lie about her to anyone else. Do I need to say anything? I don't think so. This is one of the 
stupidest things I've seen this year, at least. Look, I'm Ukrainian, right? If my husband lied to people that I'm Russian, for example, I'd divorce him. I'm not kidding. I would divorce his ass because what do you mean? Like, do I matter so little to you that you're willing to lie about my nationality for some type of fetish gratification or something um there is an edit where he goes like i'm a raging whole wife says she's hurt but wants to move past it i am very sorry for your wife i think this is divorce worthy for me this is legitimately evil stupid i feel like we need a certain term for this and this is evil stupid you're welcome <laughs> let's move to the next story am i the for actively ignoring above average slash pretty women only acknowledging average women. I'm 30 male in a debate with my sister, 36 female, about this. In passing, I mentioned to her how I will only date or interact with women of average contemporary prettiness. I also told her that if I notice a woman is of an above average level of attraction and beauty, not only would I not pursue a more attractive woman, I I don't even give them attention or acknowledge them in passing. Why? I feel that above average women get a plethora of attention from every desperate man under the sun. The most cringeworthy act of a man to a hot girl is for the man to tell her how beautiful she is. Totally pathetic. <laughs> you sound so insecure and you're trying to put down other men because... I don't know, you're not feeling deserving to compliment a beautiful woman? This is absurd. As if the hot girl hasn't been told her entire goddamn life how attractive she is and how many men in both her personal and professional lives have bent over backwards as a result of her attractiveness. For the record, I am not a red pillar. I'm a diehard liberal and my common history proves this. I have receipts. I feel like if a person needs to clarify something and be like look but i have proof that i'm a good person or that i'm a liberal or that i'm a feminist then something is very fishy out there just as in this case in point so no I'm not a red pillar ranting. I'm genuinely wondering if this makes me an asshole. Also, this comes from exhaustion of competition and not a fear of women. For the record, my body count as a male is nearing 50. I don't know why we needed that information. I have dated some of the hottest women in my early 20s. And after multiple relationships with really attractive women, every single guy I knew wanted to f my girlfriends and didn't hide it and would be the orbiter till the end of the earth seriously so okay i'm gonna discuss this when i finish the story if you have dated a smoking hot girl before you'll understand what that entails constant messages from men constant favors being offered a laundry list of orbiters keeping themselves in position for the perfect moment i'm exhausted of it all and the idea of entering into another relationship with a super attractive woman is extremely off-putting. So when above average pretty women are in my vicinity, I turn my body 90 degrees so they are not even in my field of view. <laughs> I'm not joking. I wish you were. If I'm passing an attractive woman in the store or on the sidewalk, I look away. <laughs> I can't. Why is this so funny? <laughs> so, am I the asshole for not bending over backwards for attractive women like most men do? And does it make me an asshole to only give attention or acknowledge women who are of average or less beauty? I want a real relationship and connection that is based off of shared interests, shared values, yeah. etc. Not a relationship that is based off of how hot I think she is. <laughs> thoughts? What if your soulmate with your interests and the perfect personality for you is a super attractive woman, but you're not gonna acknowledge her because f her, she's beautiful. This is so mean both to beautiful women and to average looking women. I don't even want to, you know, acknowledge these categories, but for the sake of this argument, let's do that. You don't sound as a person who actually values 
a woman's personality because you just keep talking about how I will just ignore beautiful women and not give them a chance to reveal anything beyond their appearance and at the same time you will hit only on average women I would actually like to be there when you get a girlfriend average in in your words and tell her your thing you know honey I specifically ignore all the hot women because well I think it's too hard to date them so I picked you are you happy this is so insecure like I find this very funny that he goes on to say that his body count is nearing 50 and he dated some of the hottest women in his early 20s but then at the same time he's so threatened by competition that he will not even look at beautiful women because he's so afraid that he will get to date a beautiful woman and he will have other men around who want that woman this is pathetic like if you are a good partner and you are let's say not as attractive as your woman she will still not look at other men if your relationship is good if you're a good partner if she's happy with you then it shouldn't matter like this whole thing should not really matter every single guy i knew wanted to f my girlfriends and i don't see a problem unless you're insecure okay so like for example i consider myself like a super average looking woman right but i still have dudes who would want to f me and some dudes who are orbiters as they're called here who you know would want a relationship right but does my husband care does he find it tiring and exhausting? No, because he doesn't have a problem with self-esteem, so he doesn't give a sh if again you are a good partner and you are sure of yourself and your relationship it won't matter that's all i have to say you're ridiculous let's move on am i the asshole for asking my wife for a paternity test for our son i 32 male asked my 27 female wife for a paternity test for our son sam sam has blue eyes and we both have brown eyes he otherwise looks like my wife and not me so i asked her if we could get Get a paternity test my family came to see sam and also felt he doesn't look like me and my brother agreed so after they left i asked my wife for a test and she blew up at me saying she can't believe i would ask that and if i don't trust her what is the point no one in either one of our families has blue eyes so i thought i was asking a valid question but i'm not sure anymore every time i see something like this i'm just upset that having children is not a regulated procedure that anyone can basically have a child i legitimately think there should be some obligatory certification for soon-to-be parents precisely to avoid stupid situations like this because if this man had enough education and understood at least something about children he would not have this problem he would know that a lot of newborns have blue eyes that afterwards change to a different color that's just how it works also sometimes if you and your wife have brown eyes your child can have blue eyes just because genes work not in this super strict way of we both have brown eyes so he will have brown eyes no again this is high school level biology how dna works how hereditary traits work work and he's like i thought i was asking a valid question no it's not a valid question do your research first like if you think this is strange that your son has blue eyes go on google google is free before destroying your trust with your wife forever i would never be able to look at my husband the same if i gave birth to his son that we both wanted and he would go like he doesn't look like me so maybe you around behind my back so i want a paternity test my family came to see sam and also felt he doesn't look like me dude i don't know maybe it's my personal problem i don't know maybe there are some people who also feel like that please let me know i just think that most of the babies newborns look like wrinkled potato with eyes to me at least 
let's move to the next story. And it is, am I an asshole for telling my wife to wear my favorite perfume? Earlier this evening, my wife and I made the decision to go out for dinner. We don't have much food in the fridge and neither one of us felt like cooking. She said that she needed a few minutes to freshen up and change. And I agreed to let her do it. I love this. Let her do it. I had already showered and was ready to go, but some people are just fickle and can't get their act together. Couldn't pass by the opportunity to dig at your wife. Well, there is this perfume that my wife wears that I find incredibly attractive, and I expected her to apply it for our date. However, when she came out of the master bedroom, she was just instead wearing a new scent which I didn't care for at all. I asked her what perfume she was wearing, and she said that it was a new kind she bought at the mall. I respectfully asked her to wash it off and apply the scent that I like. She seemed to be in a disbelief at what I had said, but I don't know why. Perfumes and colognes are worn purely to attract members of the opposite sex, and she has nobody in her life to attract but me, her husband. I finally just decided to save my breath and let her wear the perfume because she was making such a big issue out of it, but it continued to bug me and the car. Also, let her wear again. When we sat down at our booth, my wife was talking to me about her day, but I was struggling to pay attention. I was going over all of the possible scenarios in my head about what could be going on. The fact that she bought perfume behind my back and then refused to stop wearing it was very concerning to me. My wife stopped talking and I didn't answer, which she found annoying. I think maybe she asked me a question, but I suddenly blurted out a question of my own. I asked her if she was having an affair. I'm sorry, I didn't read the story past the first paragraph and it just got so much worse. Oh my god. At that particular moment, the waiter was refilling my drink and he seemed shocked that I asked that question, but I figured that a restaurant was as good a place as any. Long story short, my wife went berserk. She said that I was acting completely unhinged, but I calmly made my points about her perfume that I hated, that she bought it without my input, and that she wouldn't wear what I actually liked. I told her that she must be trying to impress someone else, and I named some of her male colleagues. She told me that I was behaving like a jerk, and we finished the meal without saying much at all. We're home now, and she won't even be in the same room as me. I think that she blames me for showing concern about the state of her marriage, which is laughable to me. All I want is for her to to understand my thought process, but she doesn't seem interested in anyone's perspective but her own. It's getting really tiring explaining such basic logic to her. Am I the asshole? It's not basic logic, it's pure fucking insanity, and it's you who is not interested in anyone's perspective but his own, and I hope to God that this is rage bait. Crazy thought. Women and men, doesn't matter, can buy perfumes, makeup, clothes, not because they want to attract a man or a woman, okay? Crazy, I know, sounds absolutely unhinged, but that's just kind of what it is. I buy perfumes because I want to smell good, not because I want to impress my husband, even though, yes, it's a nice bonus that he likes how I smell, but it's not the end goal and I feel stupid even explaining that. This is hilarious in my opinion and to think that she's having an affair because she bought a new perfume that she likes is just wow. Let's move on to the next story. Am I the asshole for insisting that my daughters participate in our traditional beauty pageant? So every year for the past decade, we've been doing a family trip to Disney World. One of our traditions is that my two daughters, now 14 and 12, dress up as Disney princesses and we have a little beauty contest. It's all in good fun, or so I thought. The past few years, my eldest has been going through puberty and it's been a bit rough 
on her. She's always been a little less traditionally pretty than her younger sister. Her words, not mine, and the hormonal changes haven't helped with her self-esteem. Last year, she didn't seem as enthusiastic about the contest, but she still participated. This year, she's flat out refused to do the Princess Beauty contest. She says it makes her feel ugly and insecure, especially because her sister usually wins. She also says she's too old for it and it's not fun for her anymore. Now, I don't want to make her do something she doesn't want to, but it's a family tradition and her sister still enjoys it. Plus, it's meant to be just a fun, silly thing, not something to be taken seriously. I've tried explaining this to her, but she just gets upset and tells me I don't understand. My wife is on my daughter's side and is suggesting we should let her opt out or change the tradition to something less beauty focused. I think it's just a phase my eldest is going through and she'll come around eventually. I've been getting a lot of flack for this from my wife and a few friends who I've told about the situation. They think I'm being insensitive and that I should respect my daughter's feelings. I think I'm just trying to maintain a harmless family tradition. If this tradition makes your daughter, your child who has to participate in it, uncomfortable. It's not a harmless tradition. What is not clear in here? And also, you make your daughters dress up and compete against each other who's prettier? I refuse to discuss this any longer. This is absolutely terrible. Just let your daughter have puberty and peace. This is a hard time as it is, okay? Without her father trying to force her to compete with her sister who is more beautiful. Her words, not mine, that she is less traditionally pretty than her sister, it already shows that she is having self-image issues and you're just pushing and pushing to make them worse. Why do you insist on torturing your child stop and the last story i have for you today is also <laughs> disney related weirdly am i the for leaving my wife alone at Disneyland. So my wife and I are currently not really talking to each other because of what happened on the last day of our vacation. On our last day, we went to Disneyland in Japan. We had been in Japan for two weeks and up until then, everything was pretty much okay. We had a lot of fun traveling around the country. We are from Europe, by the way. In the afternoon, as we were waiting in line, she asked me to tell a joke. So I told one and that joke apparently hurt her feelings. She was upset and went quiet. I told her I was sorry, but she didn't accept my apology. She told me how that hurt her feelings and that I shouldn't be telling jokes like that. I was pissed why she couldn't just let it go and stopped talking to her. The mood worsened and she suggested that we separate for a moment so that everyone could calm down. After about 15 minutes, she sent me a text message asking, me to meet up. When I met her, we got into a huge argument where she told me she was sad because there's always a bit of truth behind a joke and how my joke ruined her mood. I asked her why she always felt the need to push it and that I told her I was sorry before. I told her that she was no fun to be with, got up and left the park. She sent me a text asking me if I was leaving her alone at the park to which I didn't reply. She then called me and and was crying on the phone. I asked if she could finally pull herself together. She didn't reply. I asked her again, but she only asked crying if I was seriously leaving her alone like that and to stop yelling at her. She drove me mad. She apologized for calling. I told her, nice try, but that's not working, and we hung up. I went back to the hotel, and when she came back about three hours later, she didn't talk to me. She took a shower and then told me she couldn't believe that I left her alone at the park in a foreign country with no cell phone, her phone died after our call, that she didn't know how to get back to the hotel, the park was an hour away, and when she finally found the hotel, she couldn't get in because I had both keys, so she had to ask other people to help her out and that she felt abandoned by me. We had another argument, I told her my view and she suggested we put the matter aside, as we had a long way home 
home the next day. We've been home for two days now and we only talk to each other the bare minimum. She only told me that her trust in me was broken and that family never leaves someone behind, especially not in a foreign country. That I didn't care about what happened to her. I didn't think I did something wrong. Maybe I really shouldn't have left her behind like that, but she kind of deserved it. She should have just accepted my apology and pulled herself together. So am I the asshole here? You're straight up devil spawn. What the f is wrong with you? You left your partner in a foreign country without a working phone and basically without means of coming back home. She had no phone, no key to the hotel, and no idea how to get back. After all this, you still think you didn't do anything wrong? This story literally rendered me speechless. Also, the fact that he didn't say what the joke was makes me think that it was some pretty f***ing stupid, insensitive and mean joke. Doesn't even matter if she had the means to go back, even though the whole situation, the context, the details of the dying phone and stuff like that makes it so much worse. It doesn't even matter. Like, if you went somewhere with your partner or with a friend in a foreign country, it is just not normal to abandon them in the middle of a place that they don't know, they could get lost, they don't speak the language around them, so like just abandoning a person alone at a random place is not normal. Especially when you got upset because she couldn't just forget about a super weird joke you told. Again, we don't know the joke, but if she was that upset, it must have been something bad, okay? And even if she overreacted and you didn't like that she didn't calm down as fast as you wanted her to, it is not justifiable to leave her alone in a foreign country. So yeah, with that, I am gonna leave you. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for watching, if you're still here, though I doubt it. I will see you in another video next week, as always. Bye!